Hi, folks. Chris Voss here from thechrisvossshow.com. Thechrisvossshow.com. Hey, we're coming here with another great podcast. Welcome. Welcome one and all to the great this the, the great circus in the podcast world. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm trying to do some sort of Barnum Bailey thing, and it's clearly going to fail, but maybe you'll think that's funny. I don't know. Whatever. If it is, it is. If it's not, well, just, you know, go watch another show that was funnier at the beginning. I don't know. But this one's going to be a great show in the middle and the end because we have a great guest. He's an amazing person. So I'll make up for the funny, I promise. Go to goodreads.com forward says Chris Voss. Hit the bell notification button. Go to youtube.com forward says Chris Voss. See everything we're reading and reviewing over there. Remember, the Chris Voss Show family loves you, but doesn't judge you. Also, go see our major group on LinkedIn, 132,000 people. You'll know it when you find it. And our uh, LinkedIn newsletter, man, it's just killing it over there. Like, every day we put it out, people are just eating it the crap up. Uh, like, literally. I, I don't know. Uh, There's a joke in there for some recent news on the CNN, but we'll leave that alone. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, be sure to check all of that out. Today, we have an amazing author on the show. He put out this book in January 26, my birthday in 2017. Uh, and I saw him on a couple other shows and was really interested in what he's doing. Uh, the book is called Estro Generation. How estrogenics are making you fat, sick, and infertile, Dr. Anthony G.J. is on the show with us today. He's going to be talking about it. And uh, I just wanted to get him on the show for this book so I can blame estrogenation on or estrogenics, I guess, on all my fatness and not all the food that I ate, which I did eat, which is the reason I'm fat. But he is on the show today going, what the hell did I get myself into? He is the president and CEO of AJ Consulting Company. Uh, he earned. He's He's a real doctor, by the way. I want to make that clear in the world of, uh, you know, all sorts of conspiracy stuff and everything else. Dr. J earned a BA with a double major in biology and theology from Ave uh, Ave Marie University in Naples, Florida, where he researched HIV human, uh, well, we all know what that HIV is, inhibitors. After college, he continued to work with the virus and uh, or with virus lent virus i guess that is in the context of alzheimer's disease for the u.s department of va the veterans affairs next he earned his phd in biochemistry from boston university school of medicine researching fats hormones and cholesterol uh, he could have just come to my house and done work on me i got enough of that stuff going on uh he has worked for three years as a scientific researcher at mayo clinic we all know where that is in rochester minnesota researching stem cells epigenetics and infrared light clearly i didn't go to enough college welcome to the show dr j how are you yeah it's good chris thanks for having me i'm trying to make up for that non-funny part at the beginning but uh, uh we'll see how it goes my audience they, they love it you know sometimes when you you bomb it, it makes people laugh so welcome to the show give us your plugs so people can find you on the interwebs yeah i mean i have a really clunky website name it's called ajconsultingcompany.com mm -hmm. and i i had to actually create it way back you know on my bio you're reading it mentions designing viruses. I was actually a virus designer, which oh, wow. sounds terrible these days, right? Yeah. <laughs> but I actually made viruses and it was the, the the intent was to cure Alzheimer's. We were injecting viruses into mice and things and mice that had Alzheimer's and trying to cure the Alzheimer's from them. Mm -hmm. So we were manipulating the DNA and creating virus. But um, obviously now, there's been some issues <laughs> with manipulated viruses. But, some issues at that Wuhan uh, lab. That's yeah, a, and that's yeah. a rumor, guys. Don't 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 go off the deep end with that one. Um, yes, anyway, guys. Uh, so I got a chance to see you, Doctor J, on the show, uh, mm -hmm. a, a few different shows that I watched on YouTube, mm -hmm. and I was really interested because at 54, I started going to the gym about uh, I think six months now. I started going to the gym and working out, and it, and and I've never gone to the gym for a week in my life, like. Mm -hmm. And you can tell. I mean, look at me. I'm, <laughs> but I'm, I'm about half the size I used to be. Uh, and uh, and so what I started being concerned about was, uh, you know, my, my sort of end life run that I'm on. The last quarter, last, uh, I don't know, third, whatever you want to call it, where I am in the game at 54. And uh, I started thinking about my testosterone. Do I need testosterone supplementation? You know, when I work out my muscles, it's I don't retain as much. It's, it's harder to build muscle being as you know the old grandpa that i am and uh uh and so i've really been kind of i 
started taking lots of supplements that are supposed to be, you know, health supplements for your testosterone. I'm like, God, do I want to get the shots, you know, and all that stuff. And then I saw your show and I was really interested because I'm like, oh, oh, wow. There's 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 more to this uh, estrogen thing than I know about. So uh, talk, talk to me about what motivated you want to write this book and let's get into the details. Yeah, right on. So, I mean, I've got kids and of course I'm interested in my own testosterone and mm -hmm. I basically was studying uh, at like at Boston University Med School. I was studying hormones mm -hmm. and it was pretty clear that BPA altered your hormones like bisphenol A, the plastic ingredient. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people were talking like a few people were talking about it in the scientific community at the time. Not a lot of public knowledge there, but a lot of people were talking about it. A lot of the nerds were talking about it. And then as I started researching that, because that's a problem, right? I don't want to be ingesting a bunch of chemicals that are acting like estrogen. Mm -hmm. I started researching that and it kind of snowballed into a book because I realized, well, there's not just BPA. There's other chemicals that act like estrogen in our bodies mm -hmm. and we're being exposed to them literally every day. And wow. scientists oftentimes are undermining these things. They're saying, oh, they're not really toxic, so they're okay. Mm. And the, but there's a reason they've removed some of these things from, uh, you know, some of our different products like BPA. And then, and I think I saw in another show, you were talking about how some states and some countries ban some of these things because they know how oh, bad yeah. they are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In my book, I do a compare and contrast between Europe and the United States. And it's <laughs> astonishing how many of these things are illegal in Europe, legal in the U.S., illegal in Europe, legal in the U.S., just on and on with the different chemicals. Yeah, I mean, you, do it, you know, over here in America, they just go, can we make money off of poisoning people? Mm -hmm. Sure, do mm -hmm. that. I mean, yeah. yeah, a couple of years ago, they legalized uh, putting lead in the water again or something like that. Um, so uh, give us an overall reaching uh, sort of uh, overall uh, aspect of the book, if you would, please. Yeah, so the book is in three parts. The idea is what do what are artificial estrogens? Like, what are these chemicals? Let's identify mm -hmm. them. What do they do to your health? And then number three, how do, how do we avoid these things? I mean, it's mm -hmm. that simple. It's just basically identifying the chemicals. And then, like I say, I'm looking at the ones that we're exposed to every day. I mean, Agent Orange, for example, disrupts mm -hmm. your hormones. But we're not exposed to Agent Orange every day, thank goodness. Yeah. And so I'm not really interested in writing about it in my book. You know, it's kind of an academic exercise, hopefully, because I don't want... You know, hopefully there's nobody exposed to Agent Orange daily. I'm having a cup of it right now. Every morning, <laughs> All right, well, just Agent you. <laughs> Orange, you can order this from the Chris Moss <laughs> Show uh, coffee merch site. Um, the, uh, you know, it, I, I got to tell you, it does mess with your hormones, but it will wake you up in the morning. Um, mm -hmm. Smells like victory. Yeah, see, how I, see how I tied that one together. Uh, anyway, right now, right now, Gen Z's going. What the hell is he talking about? We never saw apocalypse now. Um, so, why, what is this? And why is it bad? I, I heard you talk about different things about women reaching, you know, having their uh, going into puberty earlier. Uh, you know, there's this overload of estrogenics in our in in everything, really. Yeah. Well, and for men, it disrupts your testosterone. Actually, women too, like it lowers testosterone. That alone should make headlines and it should be talked about and it should be, you know, considered and recognized as a huge problem because it is. Just since the 1980s, our testosterone has just declined and declined and declined. And it was already a little bit low to begin with, you know, compared to the paleo ancestors that we have. And we have records from those people and their testosterone. So just testosterone alone is a big one, but it also causes infertility, and there's a ton of people struggling. There, and that's wow. Mm -hmm. I know that's a big thing for women, too, that, mm -hmm. you know, they, they want to have a baby. They can't. Yeah, it's um, becoming, it's just breaking new records every year. The really? The amount of infertility. Oh, yeah. Wow. You know, and I've heard this for a long time, that the men have lower testosterone. And mm -hmm. I think we kind of see it in the recent generations. I mean, oh, yeah. you know, we've had different people that have talked over what's going on with men. I mean, we have the lowest amount of men dating and marrying now uh there's a few different reasons for that um well but but also the largest group of uh, uh incels and virgins and you know i mean some of the people in the gen gen z community i just look at them i'm like why aren't you out chasing girls like i was chasing i mean as soon as i was like i don't know about 11 or something i was like mm -hmm. there's something about these women thing that i'm kind of i don't know why but they seem interesting mm -hmm. and uh i want to know more but uh, I, I just don't get it. And I think, uh, like you mentioned, wasn't it like 100 years ago or something? We, we, we almost have like half or a third or something of the amount of testosterone that, that mm -hmm. 
that they yeah, have. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah. Wow. I mean, compared to our paleo, like the numbers, the average or the normal range in American blood tests for testosterone mm -hmm. generally, total testosterone is like 250 to 1000 or something like that. Depends on the blood test company, but sometimes they say it's 250 to 1500. Mm -hmm. But what's crazy about that is just like in the 1980s, it was 500 to 1500. Holy crap. Well, and the wow. average male was 500 in the 1980s. In the 90s, the average male was 400, so it dropped 100 points. And then in the 2000s, the average male was 300. It's the Massachusetts Institute Aging, or the Massachusetts Aging Study. Um, so it, it's been just dropping. And of course, at some point, it's just kind of plateaued around 250, 300. But I think it's literally an emergency if your testosterone is below 500. You've got to get it up if you want to be optimized. And that's my mm -hmm. goal for people optimization not just like i don't want you having just zero energy just dragging through life you know zero muscle mass zero sex drive <laughs> really slow healing if you get injured you know what i mean like yeah i started noticing it in my 50s i started yeah, noticing yeah. everything going down i mean it was well, kind of nice to have the sex drive lay off a little bit you know yeah <laughs> you don't have that teenage thing where you're like ah, ah, ah. Yeah. yeah but that, well, that was kind of nice to get rid of yeah but yeah, it's back. <laughs> the, I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, testosterone is, I mean, it's a massive influencer on your body. And, and the other aspect of aging, like you're mentioning, it doesn't just go down with age a little bit, but it, more importantly, it, your sensitivity to it goes down with age. Mm. So you actually need higher levels as you age, not lower levels. And mm. most of our culture has the opposite. And I, I, you know, I, I, I talked to a bunch of my friends. I had friends that, you know, they have to inject it or, you mm -hmm. know, do all the different whatever the supplements. And I started researching. It's like when you start it, you can't get off it. You're done. Nah, and, that's what they say. It's a myth, yeah. actually. Um, oh, really? Oh, yeah, for sure. They, they say that because bodybuilders, right? Mm -hmm. Bodybuilders use it. They abuse it. They go way, way, yes. way above the normal limits. And then when they get off, in fact, their body will never produce it again. They have to keep taking it at uh -huh. some level. But if you're a normal person and you you jump on it, like here's the problem, right? Like, and by the way, I've I personally have a prescription for it because if mm -hmm. I get injured, I boost my levels up nice and high and I heal oh, yeah. super fast. Oh yeah, and I'm young, right? But I've taken it for an entire year just as an experiment, mm -hmm. literally a full year, a couple of years ago, and. And I got off it, no problem. I mean, it took me about two weeks. I adapted to getting mm -hmm. off of it. My levels are right back where they were. Here's the problem. When people take it, let's say your levels are 250, mm -hmm. right? Which is, again, super common. I mean, 19-year-olds are coming in that, that level. It's terrible. Um, that's really shitty sex drive. That's really poor energy. All, all kinds of problems, right? often brain problems too, like brain fog or even just apathy, sexual apathy, right? You're not interested in women like you're talking about. So let's say you're at 250 and you get some cream and you start rubbing on the testosterone cream and you get your levels up to 800, right? Mm -hmm. Which is kind of where I'm at naturally, 700, 800. Um, and then let's say you get off of that cream a year later. Mm hmm you're going to feel like garbage and you're going to have no sex drive and you're going to have no energy. But guess what? Your level is 250. It just goes back to kind of where it was. Yeah. Unless you've done something different in terms of, yeah. uh, you know, getting rid of these fake estrogen chemicals and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So, How much, yeah, you feel like garbage and you feel like you're addicted to it, but you're not really. Yeah. How much testosterone do you need to take so I can get me a unibrow? Because that's really what I want the chrome magnum thing going on there. Yeah. But the forehead. Just try rubbing shit. it right up here. Yeah, I want that. I want that elevated forehead that gives me that yeah. whole yeah, yeah like that he, there's a player. real Neanderthal. Yeah. Remember that basketball player? He tried to patent that or trademark Did he? Or something. Yeah. Like is there a way to grow that? <laughs> no, he he has this crazy unibrow, and I can't remember, but he tried to he, he applied for a trademark for it. <laughs> Let's go to the Middle East or you know. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, oh, yeah, it, it sucks when I see girls have it because, I mean, girls are so beautiful. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, you really need to. I think there was a famous movie with one a beautiful Mexican actress. And she had like the unibrow thing going on. I forget oh, what it gosh. was. But, uh, yeah, was, anytime I see that, my my uh, maleness goes, run away. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, you know, uh, if I want to see that, you know, I'll go on a grinder, uh, the app. So, um, so let's talk about some of these chemicals are in the thing. Cause I, mm -hmm. I went through, you have a list on your site and of course you give, uh, I think coaching and consulting mm -hmm. to people. Um, you have a list on your site about different products that you use 
And it, what, what's in these products? Like what, what's screwing us up in some of our soaps and shampoos and crap? Yeah. Um, it's mostly the parabens and the phthalates mm. in, in the personal. It's always products. those parabens. Damn it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, and the sad thing about both of those is they're categories of chemicals. <clears throat> so those aren't just one chemical Par There's like methyl paraben and propyl paraben and butyl butyl excuse me, butyl paraben. There's like an entire category of these goofy mm -hmm. words and th that nobody can pronounce. And so nobody talks about them, <laughs> but they're real. I mean, they're a real problem because they act like estrogen and not only that. So basically people are rubbing estrogen on their skin with their soap. Mm. And it, it loves to go through your skin. It doesn't want to wash out in the water. It wants to stay on your skin. I mean, the fragrance stays on, right? So basically when you, you can rub up against things that get estrogen on you and you absorb them in your skin. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Note to self, quit spooning with the girlfriend. All right. <laughs> all the perfume, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's true. There's perfume and makeup too as well. But uh, yeah, honey, I, I don't want you to get your estrogen on me. Uh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, I, all right. I just got a text. She's leaving me. That was, yeah, that's okay. It was, she was going to leave next week anyway. She got a guy on Instagram. Um, so uh, the, a lot of these stuff, uh, a lot of the stuff that's in our things, you know, and I've had problems where I'm not out. I'm not asthmatic. I don't have like allergy sort of problems, but I've had problems with like, like dryer sheets uh, mm -hmm. and stuff uh, uh, and different, like really high perfumed detergents and stuff like that they'll, they'll screw with me in my lungs like i can just kind of feel it like if i go down the detergent aisle i start feeling really weird man like what the hell it's like an over it's like i don't know it's like the worst thing ever and so i've always had to be careful like i can't use dryer sheets that that it's like i don't know i can just smell it and it seems like overwhelming and i even know until recently that it puts like a wax on your stuff that's what makes it softer it just puts a nasty wax on all your stuff and you're just you're just wearing wax all day long which is gross oh, yeah. yeah they've even i mean it's funny you say that because it sounds over the top right but they've even done scientists have literally done studies they call them dermal uptake studies which means skin mm. uptake meaning like how much mm -hmm. your skin is absorbing just from laundry detergent and they find like these these laundry detergents with all these fragrances they spike your blood levels. Like your blood uh -huh. levels of these chemicals go up. And again, these are estrogen chemicals. It's even worse when you drink it, but don't do that. People, oh, yeah. That's, well, a, that's a joke. Do. No, people drink it, right? They don't do you drink water. detergent? Well, in, in the form of water. Like they're not filtering their drinking water. And oh, a lot that's, of these chemicals the don't yeah. get filtered out. I mean, people assume their drinking water is good. They open up the tap. They put it right in their cup. You know, think about all the plastic pipes that stuff has gone through and how mm -hmm. much fragrance chemicals and all that has not gotten filtered out. A lot of these chemicals are so small, they don't get filtered out. So no. they're, they're in there. Yeah. No, I think one thing I I, I heard you talk about the show, and I, I'm going to uh, paraphrase as best I remember it, so correct me if I'm wrong. But a lot of, you know, we have, we have a lot of stuff being dumped in our water between us peeing in it and then... Mm -hmm. uh, like a lot of the antidepressants and i think mm -hmm. are, are coming through like even the fish now are getting like their own versions of antidepressants in the oceans mm -hmm. yeah but well they need it i mean some are depressed i mean <laughs> you'd be depressed too if you had to if you had to if you had to swim around in your basically your own toilet bowl um but uh that's their problem um but i don't know but some never mind there's not a joke there uh so talk to us about the water and stuff i i've always had my water ever since i lived in las vegas I've always bought or had a machine that will do reverse osmosis. At one point, I had a really high-end machine that we reviewed on the show uh, that does, like, I think it had, like, 12 different filters in it. I had for a few years until it finally conked out. Um, what, what, what's in our water? What's going on with that? Yeah, well, birth control, for one. A lot of people don't realize they're literally drinking birth control. Mm. And, now, what uh, flavor is that? Do, can I get that in cherry? It's or estrogen. <laughs> it's estrogen. You know, you know it's funny that you know that new car smell yeah that that's actually estrogen too like that's plastic but it's the wow. chemical is called phthalates and those mm. they're actually a little bit attractive to us right like we like that new car smell because it, mm -hmm. it it tricks our body we think that's estrogen is that is that why we sometimes like some of this stuff maybe this oh, is yeah. why women really like all that smelly stuff because they're like mm, more of me yeah oh yeah wow. <laughs> yeah they think it's i mean it's 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 attractive and so, you know, they're trying to put out signals of attraction, but maybe that's why men are health. attracted to estrogen smelling perfume. Cause you know, we're mm -hmm. like babes, eh? 
Um, <laughs> so, I mean, what do we need to do with our water to to yeah. get some of this crap out? Because yeah, you, have you know, filter. I haven't gotten pregnant yet, but it, that mm -hmm. water probably explains why. Yeah, well, yeah, you're on birth control and plastic chemicals, but no, you and a vasectomy. It. So there's that. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> and you're a man and i'm a um, oh wait what a misinformation <laughs> the feminist told me we're all equal damn it all right women and women and men work the same yeah damn we it. are we're getting there with these chemicals but Probably. actually scientists call it male feminization i mean it's literally termed male feminization wow. if you expose animals to enough of these chemicals you can turn a male frog into a female or a male animal into a female and all this kind of thing that explains all my married friends um anyway <laughs> i'm just kidding on the married friends but no there's a lot of guys that act like girls there's lots of crying going on you know a lot of them addicted have adapted oh, yeah. this uh victim oh, mentality and and then like i said I don't, I don't even understand this generation that doesn't chase girls and you know want yeah. to date them and stuff they're just like i'm just gonna stand over here and be angry um so what's the best way to clean your water is it, am i doing good with reverse osmosis and all that filtration system that i usually buy at the store yeah yeah anything with activated charcoal hmm. so if you've got an activated charcoal filter also called carbon filter or something like that mm -hmm. that pulls out all the fake estrogens mm -hmm. and reverse osmosis kicks it up a notch and takes everything out mm. And that's what I use too. I have a remineralizer on the end of that too. So it mm -hmm. puts minerals back into it. You don't need yeah. that, but you know, it's all, that's phenomenal. So yes, that works. Even like a regular Brita filter works. Although I don't like it when people filter out the plastic and then they put it back in plastic, right? Yeah. Let's talk about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Plastics are notorious. The problem is even if it's BPA free, it's still full of estrogens. It's still full wow. of these estrogen chemicals. Because companies aren't particularly honest. There's what they do is they say, oh, it's BPA free. And then they put BPS, which is just as estrogenic. It mm -hmm. acts like estrogen just as much in your body. Um, or they put BPF or they put BPAF. There, there's literally all these different BP versions <laughs> that you can put in, and they all just as bad. So and, what do we need to do? Do we need to move away from plastic and go to glass yeah. and water oh, yeah. and stuff like that? Oh yeah. With liquids, I mean, yes, yeah. Wow. And see, that's one of my problems. I go buy all my, you know, since we lost the machine, the machine was great because from end to end, and like you say, it had had the 12 different filters. And I think it was three UVs, and then it had the minerals out, minerals in after the reverse osmosis, had a bunch of different things in it. Fort unfortunately, the company went out of business, mm -hmm. um, but it was great because it was a, it was a stainless steel or whatever mm -hmm. sort of steel they use for water uh, where it doesn't rust. And from beginning to end, you know, the point I would put my cup in, it would, you know, it wouldn't be touching any plastic. Well, I, I guess there was plastic lines in it, come to think of it. Um, but yeah. uh, plastic water lines. But yeah, this is kind of interesting. It's you know? minor though. Yeah. I mean, the amount yeah. compared to filtering. I actually found a company. It's called Purified Guru. Mm -hmm. And I list that one on my website, that AJ Consulting Company website I was telling you about. Um, that's reverse osmosis. It's all stainless steel and they don't even have a plastic tank under your sink. It's literally just a pump mm -hmm. and it has a steel, a stainless steel hose that attaches to your faucet. So it's literally a hundred percent plastic free in terms of how much, where the water is in contact, mm -hmm. which is uh, the only unit that I know of that's reverse osmosis. That's like that. I actually reached out to them to see if they'll send us a review unit for the Chris Foss show. We reviewed all our mm -hmm. products over there yeah, and, good. uh, and so I reached out to him. I, I haven't heard back from him, but we'll follow up with them. I was kind of interested in maybe buying their machines um, because I, I used to really love the, the water I used to come out was like really nice. Mm -hmm. uh, when I lived in Vegas, this is a story that's kind of interesting. When I lived in Vegas, I had a, a friend who, who was a, who's a wife of a cop. And uh, I was talking to her one time and she goes, she goes, yeah, my husband, he won't drink the tap water in Vegas. And I go, why not? And she goes, he's a cop. They go see what they're pulling out of Lake Mead, you know, and yeah. the straws yeah. for uh, <laughs> the water supply for Vegas go into Lake Mead. And yeah. he, he's like, he's like, they pull bodies out. And oh, yeah. ever since Lake Mead started dropping, they're like finding people that, you know, got mm. sunk with uh, cement, cement stuff from the mob, you know, like sure. 100 years ago. Sure. Yeah. Um, and he's like, he, he's like, after he's seen what's in Lake Mead, he won't, he won't drink the water. And I'm mm. like, that's probably a good reason for me not to drink the water either uh mm -hmm. but yeah a lot of people don't realize all this crap is going around uh i did take your your list of stuff uh i started using the bar soap from kirk's mm 
mm-hmm. and uh, I believe the shampoo, the Jason shampoo. Yep. Yep. And uh, one thing I did run into is the laundry detergent. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, oh, I'm using the laundry detergent. That seems to be working fine. I need to Seven go by the, yep. I need to go by the deodorant. Um, I only bathe once a week, so uh, I don't have to worry too much about it. Yeah. Um, I did try the seventh generation for the dishwasher, mm-hmm. and boy, that stuff isn't working on my dishwasher well. It all mm. backed up, left the thing. I couldn't get oh. my dishes clean after really? about two or three things of that. The grease, you know, I don't wash my dishes, I'm really bad that way. <laughs> you don't um, rinse them, pre rinse them. No, I don't pre rinse them very well, so that might sure, be sure. my bad. I mean, that's the dishwasher's yeah. problem. Well, I don't care as much about the dishwasher, washer okay, detergent as guys. I would like the soap you're rubbing directly on your skin, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because that gets absorbed, and I guess what people don't realize mm-hmm. is, you know, your your skin's your largest like membrane or organ, mm-hmm. isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Unless you're like morbidly obese, and then your fat cells are your largest organ, because fat cells are technically classified as an organ. I have both. <laughs> so, you, know, you might have some competition there for some people, but that's that's all right. I mean, again, your skin—you don't want to be rubbing stuff on your skin that you're not willing to eat. You know. So, um, can you eat any of this stuff? Oh, sure. Well, you wouldn't want to, but it, you yeah, know, you wouldn't want I mean, to. Soap but, would be yeah. pretty, burn when I was out. growing up, my mom made me eat plenty of soap. So yeah, right. this exactly. far, so. make sure it's really good quality. <laughs> well, I mean, that's what you do. You always make sure that doves out there when you start swearing around mom. Um, you can't you can't have that zest soap. That's yeah. that does not go down well. I I <laughs> I actually have a review site where we taste test a lot of soaps for my childhood. Um, but yeah, a lot of people don't realize, like like you say, you that you can get testosterone cream. You rub it onto your skin. It mm-hmm. absorbs in your skin. I'm taking uh, from a private uh, doctor um, that we had on the show who's a pharmacist. And he uh, he's really big into glutathione. Mm-hmm. And uh, taking glutathione, it's a big thing, uh, I guess, thing for uh, uh, getting rid of toxins. Yep. And uh, Tony Robbins is one of his clients, and and he works with a lot of pharmacists. To I guess a lot of rich people have <laughs> their mm-hmm. own personal. Yeah, it's pharmacists. expensive stuff. Yeah, yeah. And so <laughs> he works. actually he sent us a glutathione sample that he uses, and I have to rub it on uh, my skin. But yeah, mm-hmm. people don't realize if you're rubbing these harmful chemicals on your skin, yeah, it's going to end up in your blood and your system, right? Oh yeah. In fact, sunscreen too. Like a lot of people overlook sunscreen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I to- I talk about it a lot in my book, Estro Generation, but um, after I published my book, they finally came out with a study on this chemical that's commonly found in sunscreen. It's called oxybenzone. Yeah. And it's, I mean, you go to Walmart and it's like hard to find a sunscreen that doesn't have oxybenzone even today. Yeah. And the study showed that with one application of sunscreen, and they had like a dozen people or whatever. One application of sunscreen. Seven days later, people's blood levels of oxybenzone were still were were still above the government's own safety limits. Holy crap! And then they, now they're panicking over that, right? And saying, "Well, we didn't. We've they've never done that simple study. So it's been legal for like forty years, and it's been all the sunscreens. And they're telling dermatologists and stuff are recommending it professionally. <laughs> and then they find, you know, obviously it's terrible because it's acting like estrogen and has other problems too. But yeah. These are problematic doses. They've never done the simple dose study where you just rub the sunscreen on and measure people's blood. It's absurd. And then you recommend, I guess you're a new father uh, somewhat, you recommend a lot of baby stuff. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of stuff that's uh, in this baby lotion. Like we recently found out they're putting, oh, what was it, in the baby powder? It's a big lawsuit. Um, Oh, yeah. Yeah, the talcum powder. Yeah, talcum um, powder, and they're just like, yeah, yeah throw some abestus in there. Asbestos. It'll make it's 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 prettier with abestus. It gives that shiny <laughs> color you used to get on your popcorn ceiling. Yeah, it's, well, yeah, kids, you got to really protect because they're so hormone sensitive and yeah. developing, and yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's a struggle, right, to be healthy yourself and then you expand that to your kids it's even harder but you have to be very intentional these days because again Mm -hmm. like even you know it's hilarious and i i talk about this in my book too china has stricter regulations on their parabens than we have in america what china yeah (laughs) so obviously we have too much money funding these politicians behind the scenes that are influencing the laws on these chemicals at least presumably um so you basically have to take matters into your own hands. Like people have to independently think for themselves on these chemicals and say, look, I don't want these in my life. I've got to mm-hmm. you know, get these products that don't have the chemicals in them. Mm-hmm. 
yeah uh, baby diaper rash uh, or healing balm for diaper rashes uh mm -hmm. baby lotion um oh, yeah. and then lots of stuff yeah you know the thing that you got me thinking about that i never thought about is yeah when i wash my clothes there's probably you know i i've never used dryer sheets and i i i you know i i, I don't know up until recently i, was, I didn't was using the nice uh um detergent you recommend but I never thought about it whatever that's what it's washing in and the chemicals or detergent there's still going to be some residuals even on on them after the rinse and then i'm going to go wear those for the week that i don't take a shower and those are going <laughs> to mm -hmm. those are going to go into my uh skin and i never thought about it i'm like holy crap you're like wearing your bottle of tide basically mm -hmm. oh yeah <laughs> which i don't know that could be a new fad on tiktok well, like I go to my in-laws and they, of course, use the regular laundry detergents mm -hmm. that with all the fragrances and the whole thing. And I've got kids. And like you said, and we, we you know, we got to do your laundry once in a while if you stay there for a few days. And um, when we come home, it literally takes like three different wash cycles to get all that fragrance out of our clothing because I use fragrance free. So I really notice mm -hmm. it. And it takes a while. It's not like, like even after you do a, a laundry cycle with fragrance free, it still smells like those chemicals. It's hard to get that stuff out of there. It's so embedded. You know? that, that happened to me when I stayed at a friend of mine who had two twin babies. I stayed at his house for a week with him and his wife. And, and uh, I, I put a load in their, in their uh, washing machine. And I think mm -hmm. my clothes smell like, uh, like diapers, <laughs> like diapers basically for like, I don't know, yeah. five loads. I could not yeah. get rid of that smell. Yes. Yeah, and uh, washable I, diapers. Yeah, after that, I cut off my penis and said, I'm never having kids. <laughs> I'm not doing that. I'm going to go full eunuch. Yeah. But uh, so you have a link on your website people can go to on what I use on ajaconsultingcompany.com. Uh, I advise people go look at it. But just about anything perfume, cologne, underarm deodorant, yeah. toothpaste. Oh, yeah. This stuff is insidious. Stuff. Like even in blankets, there's phthalates in yeah. our blankets. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like they're cases. just. Yeah, I travel with cotton pillowcases because, you know, if your pillowcase is made out of polyester, polyester mm -hmm. is technically plastic. Most people don't think about that. Really? Oh, yeah. And it's polyethylene terephthalate. I mean, that's the name of poly. Polyester is just a shortened way of saying polyethylene terephthalate. And I've already mm -hmm. mentioned phthalates. It's just a, an, an estrogenic compound. It's an estrogen wow. chemical. And so if you're breathing it all night, like I don't mind if people are wearing some, some polyester. Uh, but if you're literally laying on a polyester pillowcase and breathing it all night, there's <laughs> there's research showing. In fact, even they've even done studies with baby mattresses, like crib mattresses, and found that that increases levels to the cancer causing levels in some cases with some crib mattresses wow. that are real plasticky and stuff because people don't want their babies peeing all over the mattress. So they make them out of pl like more plastic and more plastic chemicals. So even there, you got to be careful. There's a lot. It's eye opening once you kind of realize how pervasive these chemicals are and how problematic they are for people's health. It's like this giant awakening for a lot of people. Yeah. And like I said, I bought a lot of the products. I think I've been using for about a week, week and a half now. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I mean, for me being a guy, you know, of course I sweat, get greasy a lot, stuff like that. Um, and I've always kind of had to kind of have something a little stronger to, to get me clean mm -hmm. because I'm a guy. Uh, and hopefully I have a lot of testosterone. I need to get my testosterone checked. Mm. But uh, uh, I, I've noticed it works just fine for me. My hair feels a little bit cleaner. I don't seem to have that residual sort of, why is my hair kind of still waxy a little bit? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, my hair feels cleaner. My, you know, I wash my hands with the Kirk soap and everything. Everything comes out feeling clean. I don't feel like there's any residual. This is kind of interesting. Baby bottles can have some of this stuff in it. So you recommend some baby mm. bottles. Oh, yeah, yeah. You don't want uh, nipples and stuff, yeah candles Plastic liners yeah yeah exactly soy based candles you know that's the other thing too that was interesting i saw you talk about the show was uh soy based stuff yeah and I you know i went vegan for a while and was uh doing mm -hmm. uh doing the vegan thing mm -hmm. even coffee machines wow mm -hmm. um so let's talk about a little bit about that with the yeah, soy based plastic. stuff well yeah yeah coffee machines of obviously you're heating up water and you're putting in plastic right that's genius heating up plastic and running water through it that's yeah. it. what could go wrong i mean what i do is i make cold brew now i i do it at room temperature so i just put i grind a pound of coffee throw it in water room temperature and then i filter out the grinds the next day and i keep it in the fridge and i actually like hot coffee so i just put i just make it in the microwave every morning just heat it up and it tastes that's amazing good. cold brew but, is really good and it tastes good cold too in the summer but but yeah um 
what were you asking about before that? Uh, the, uh, we were asking about uh, the uh, uh, soy. Oh, yeah, soy. Sorry. <laughs> I got distracted. No problem. Coffee. Uh, you know, a lot of people, they, they argue with me about soy. And because for some reason, the vegan culture has adopted soy as like the mascot, you know? Mm. And so if you if you say something bad about soy, you're, say, you're saying something personally offensive to vegans. Which Anything is crazy, right? Personally can... offensive to vegans. <laughs> oh, that's I've true. It's a religion. It's a religion. Rock. No, but it's it's interesting because all scientists agree that soy acts like estrogen. Mm. Even the vegan scientists, like that, are defending it and stuff. They say, of course, it acts like estrogen. So nobody's in disagreement about that. What they disagree with is whether that's a healthy estrogen or whether it's a problematic estrogen. And there's debate on that. And that's an okay debate, but who wants more estrogen? In our culture, we've got so much estrogen from the plastics and BPA and the phthalates and all the stuff. I was talking about the sunscreen, the oxybenzones, the, the parabens. I mean, read my book. If you don't think you're exposed to estrogens, <laughs> like, you know, start yeah. paying attention. And, and then you throw soy in there. And the problem with a lot of the studies, think about it. You're studying somebody who's just saturated with these fake estrogens. Their body's full of them. And then you throw soy in the mix and it's like whether or not you're going to see an impact, whether it's going to raise breast cancer or whatever. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. You've already got yourself so saturated with estrogen, it's hard to do that kind of study. In fact, they've studied polar bears in northern Alaska. They had 11 polar bears. They put them to sleep and took samples out of their fat cells and all this. And they were full of these estrogen chemicals, polar bears mm. in northern Alaska, because it's worked up the food chain. It's dumped out into the oceans with our drains and our water. And it's worked into the fish and the seals are eating it. And then the polar bears are eating the seals. And even the polar bears have fake estrogen. So, of course, you do. Right. Like we all do. Yeah. So you're never going to fully get rid of these things. Yeah. But, you know, you can definitely do a lot to minimize. And I've seen people double their testosterone from like 300 to 600 just in six weeks. Wow. It happens all the time. I know I feel 100% better. I've been, there's a couple of days where I take off and sometimes I'll skip leg day because I'm really, I like my arms and you're not supposed to skip leg day, but man, the testosterone that gets generated during leg mm -hmm. day mm -hmm. is really important. And if I don't do leg day, yep. the next day I do arm day, I'll crash. Like, I'm like, why can I not hit my peaks and mm -hmm. uh, my high points? And sometimes I have to back, I've been known to back off the machine. And so I've noticed there's this pattern about three or four times that I've skipped leg day and gone ah screw it sometimes i was skipping leg day and then i would just do leg day and then you know just leave that space in there but anytime i've not done leg day i like crash and yeah. i can't i can't i can't peek out like i want i'm just like almost like struggling and i need that testosterone i've, I've been taking a lot of it kind of what led me down this path is i started looking at you know okay well let's try and get my let's try and get my testosterone up with supplements before i go do the whole let's do the doctor thing and whether it's injections or rubbing cream on me or whatever. Um, that's, you know, rubbing cream on me. That's Fridays around here. Uh, so I started taking the dim supplement and I can't mm -hmm. pronounce this. Mm -hmm. Dim Diendylmethane. Yeah. Yeah. And that's supposed to, you know, help, I guess, lower, estrogen. Mm -hmm. lower your estrogen and help compress. I didn't know that there's a whole fight in your body. Not, I don't know if it's fights the right word, but there's a whole thing in your body where, it's trying to balance your estrogen and your, because you have natural estrogen, I guess, and mm -hmm. testosterone. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. The problem with DIM is sometimes it raises estrogen. You know, <laughs> if you look at the studies, I know it's hilarious because if you look carefully at the studies, some people respond they, by taking Really? When, they're, when they take DIM, their estrogen goes up and their prostate cancer risk goes up. And some people, it's the opposite. So I'm... <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a complicated supplement. You know, great, diet. great. <laughs> explains why I'm growing breasts. Uh, wait, wait, they're muscle building breasts. Um, the uh, well, I guess I'll. I don't know. I guess I'm. Not, I don't know if I'm winning or losing at this point now. Plus, it comes packaged in a plastic bottle with plastic capsules. So um, yeah, I don't right, know. Right. Who knows? You know, it just occurred to me too that my coffee, my K cups, come in plastic too. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Well, you can get you can get those mesh ones now. Those like biodegradable yeah. ones. Those are better. Yeah. yeah, or you can you can actually. Well, that's a plastic one too. Um, the ones that have the screens you can buy, but yeah. And I, so I just figured this, I'm like, Hey man, it can't hurt. It can't hurt to try a bunch of this stuff except for the dishwasher fluid. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and you know, I, like I said, I, I don't clean. There's probably a lot of people that clean their dishes properly. 
you know, I just, I'm just like, ah, there's a bone in there from the steak. Throw that in there too. (laughs) Um, and, uh, I don't know, but it it just, it just kind of backed up and built up. I had to throw some vinegar in there. Um, but, uh, everything else that I've tried from your product list works well. I feel clean. Um, I don't, should I, should I notice anything different or is it fairly subtle or, you know, there's probably still lots of estrogen in my system. I don't know. Well, the other thing that helps is a sauna. Do you have access to a sauna at your gym or something? Uh, I don't think so. I have two of them. Oh yeah. You have two at your house. I have two gyms. Sorry. Oh, okay. Gym memberships. (laughs) Yeah. It seems kind of excessive to have two saunas in your house. Well, I mean, there's still time. (laughs) One leg in each. huh? Well, yeah. yeah. Well, it's, and some people like infrared versus heat saunas or vice versa, but mm-hmm. they're both really good for clearing estrogen. They do these scientific studies they call bus studies, blood, urine, and sweat, BUS, mm-hmm. and they measure people's urine and they find there's hardly any of these BPAs and phthalates and parabens and oxy. There's hardly any of these estrogen chemicals in their pee, mm-hmm. but they have those same people go into a sauna and then they measure their sweat and it's literally full of estrogen chemicals. Holy crap. Yeah, so you sweat the stuff out. So if you have a sauna, use it. And if you have access to one, use it. And take a shower right after you use a sauna because you don't want to just reabsorb yeah, these chemicals. Yeah, because it just reabsorbs. Mm-hmm. So you can use that. Now, uh, on your website, I saw you guys talk about this, uh, the infrared light and the mm-hmm. vitamin D lamp. Will any of that yeah. do the same sort of thing? or? Uh, infrared is beneficial in a lot of different ways, but not mm-hmm. so much for – I mean, it, 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 the infrared sauna is great because it heats your body from the inside out. And anytime mm. you heat anything, it speeds up molecular motion, right? Like oh. if you heat up water, you start getting steam because the steam is literally just water molecules flying off the top of the surface of the water. Mm-hmm. And anytime you heat up, you know, your fat cells, they start moving faster and dumping more estrogens into your blood and allows you to piss them out or sweat them out or whatever, you know, speeding up molecular motion is good. So infrared is good. UV is also good. Um, you know, for people that have tattoos, they, they've been told, and it's correct that if you go out in the sunshine all the time with your tattoo, it breaks down, like it'll, mm-hmm. it'll fade. Right. Mm-hmm. So you have to put sunscreen on your tattoo or it'll fade away. And the reason for that is tattoos are actually heavy metals. They're like balls, balls of metals under your skin. Mm-hmm. Like just think of like a little tennis ball. And when sunshine hits that, it breaks it down to little golf balls and breaks them down to smaller size balls. And then those can be cleared out by your system. And so mm-hmm. your tattoo fades away because those heavy metals are getting cleared out. Sunshine mm-hmm. breaks down a lot of toxic crap in your cells and your built up proteins and things that UV is actually good for you. Now, definitely not good for you if you get burned mm-hmm. and you're getting skin cancer and all that. I'm not saying people should go overdo it, but I'm saying like, get out in the sun, get some vitamin D lamps on you, you know, like, Mm. UV is another good form of detox. As silly as that sounds, it's actually good for you. And and sunscreen being bad for you is kind of an interesting, you know, conundrum because a lot of medical professions are telling people the opposite of both of these things. They're saying don't go out in the sun, use lots of sunscreen, but make up your own mind, right? I mean, do you want more estrogens? And you, you know what I mean? Like our ancestors were out in the sun all the time, right? Yeah, I mean, so. especially in you know different places where uh you know i'm up in utah so we have to deal with that you know people in alaska they don't get to see the sun much yeah different uh places around the thing you know they they live in the sun um so yeah. one other thing that you have that's part of your service i guess or coaching and stuff you have a thing where people can do i think it's a 23 and me test mm-hmm. or something and then you yeah. Yeah. yeah that's my main uh focus right now mm-hmm. Uh, I do DNA consulting for people. So they do the 23andMe test. They spit in the tube or Ancestry. They're both have very good tests, actually. Mm-hmm. And the health reports that are provided by those companies are really insubstantial, like insignificant. They're not very helpful. They'll tell you you've got blue eyes or something like that. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, I already know I have blue eyes. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> like I'm not learning anything for 100 bucks with that health report. But it's amazing how much information. Like when you spit in a tube for 23andMe, they give you 650,000 SNPs of DNA data. Oh, wow. And I have my own software I've created to, to analyze that because there's a ton of health information in there. Like, so I mine for that health information and I look at your Alzheimer's genes and your, your heart disease genes and your brain optimization and your gym, like what type of muscle fibers you have, the whole thing, right? Including wow. how, how does your body get rid of estrogen? Mm-hmm. In other words, like, 
does your liver handle estrogen really well? Are you really sensitive to gyno and man boobs and estrogenic symptoms? And how's your testosterone genes? The whole thing. So it's very holistic. I try and look at all kinds of different things. I'm looking for bad genes, right? I want to find people's mm. worst genes because I want to understand how to fix them at a really, mm. at a really specific way, you know, and that's mm. my expertise is simplifying this really technical information to make it practical for people and say, look, here's the problem. Here's the solution. Like, here's what we need to do instead of just saying, oh, it's genetic. You're screwed. <laughs> Right, which is kind of what modern medical doctors do. They say, "Oh, you got these risks. You're screwed." You know, mm -hmm. it's just it's just genetic. They'll tell you. I got some bad. Well, yeah, I got yeah, some bad genes. I don't. They're the ones I don't fit in anymore. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, everybody does, and and you know the, the problem is again, if the doctor is just saying, "Oh, they, it's just genetics," and he's not giving you any actionable steps to do, you know, to do something about that, well, then you know it's a failure. Right. And so so that's really a, an important step for people that want to prevent health issues or they want to optimize their health. And I even do consulting for the special forces, right, like the military. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and other people that are just interested in optimization. That's my goal. I don't want and again, like I said at the beginning, I don't want people walking around with zero energy and just feeling lousy. And the doctors are saying, oh, your blood looks fine. Your blood work looks good. Right. And I'm looking for excellent. I'm looking for optimal. And that's a big difference because the blood tests are based on normal Americans, like average Americans, and look around, right? Like yeah. average American is not a healthy American. You know? Yeah, they, they, I think they do most of the testing at the line at McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, at Walmart. <laughs> at Walmart. Walmart well, and, and vitamin D, I mean, you know, you mentioned sunshine in the vitamin D lamp. Mm -hmm. Let me give you one example. So the, they've done studies on hunter-gathering tribes, and everybody in those tribes is between 70 and 100 on their vitamin D, wow. and the average American is 30. Wow. And if you get a 30 on your blood test, the doctor will tell you that you're fine. And you, and if you're below 50, there's an increased risk of depression. There's increased risk of gut issues. There's increased risk, risk of brain fog and memory issues and fatigue, wow. just tiredness. And yet they're telling you that you're fine if you're below 50 all the time. This happens all the time. And so it's just one example of like a really easy thing to optimize because, by the way, if your vitamin D is low, that lowers testosterone. Oh, wow. And yeah, course, I think that's why I take a supplement for vitamin yeah. D. But yeah. I, I, well, I think sure. uh, Rich Cooper was one of the shows you appeared on. Mm -hmm. uh, he and I think I heard a few for other people after that. Um, you know, he goes out with his morning coffee and sits in the sun. Mm -hmm. And oh, yeah. it's better to have it naturally than to take a pill form, I suppose. Oh, yeah. Well, again, because it breaks down toxins under your skin. Mm -hmm. It breaks down bilirubin so your, your, your gallbladder and your kidneys don't get all clogged up with bilirubin mm -hmm. and stuff. You don't want to get gallstones or kidney wow. stones and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. So sunshine has other benefits that nobody talks about. You know, everybody talks about vitamin D, but nobody talks about bilirubin breakdown. Nobody talks about toxin breakdown. Wow. And it improves your metabolism, ironically, through something Really? Called, yeah, something called melanotan. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah, melanotan is what makes you tan. It's where we get the word tan. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you're out in the sun, your skin makes melanotan, and that literally boosts your metabolism. So you'll be hungrier, you'll burn calories better. Your metabolism boosts when you're out in the sun. I'm never coming in from the sun. No. <laughs> unless you're burned. <laughs> yes, yeah, unless I'm burned. When I grew up as a kid, that's probably why I was so skinny as a kid. I mean, we went to the beach all the time, living yeah, in California and stuff. Um, this is kind of interesting. I just found this on your website. I guess I didn't page down far enough when I was going through the list of stuff. But there's different um, there's different supplements that you recommend. I take a lot oh, yeah. of this stuff, actually. There's like 20 or 30 things that I take, boron, mm. dim. Mm -hmm. um and then looks like there's some stuff maybe i haven't delved into well, I, don't, uh, I don't recommend all of those supplements for everybody obviously mm -hmm. that's so basically what i do is when i do dna consulting i look at people's genetics and i say look here's the three supplements you absolutely need everything else you can tinker with it's great whatever here's the three you need because you have some genetic weak spots right or whatever. Like if you have some schizophrenia genes, you might need phosphatidylcholine or phosphatidylserine. But for the most part, I'm not going to recommend that to 99% of people. You know what I, mean? I know so lithium on is on the list. Yeah, exactly. Lithium can be good for serotonin. And I stuff. know some people who need lithium. Yeah, very rare though, right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's some sleep genes. Ironically, there's some sleep genes. They've done clinical trials on lithium. It's over-the-counter yeah. doses, not like crazy high doses that get you nauseous and all this. Just yeah. like five milligram, very low dose. Yeah. improves improves people's sleep but again that's a niche group of people everybody's different you know the mm. problem with a lot of these 
religious zealots with their diets. They're saying like, oh, vegan is for everybody or oh, this diet's for everybody or carnivores for everybody. But well, everybody's different in terms of those genes. So you have mm -hmm. to customize it. You just have to. Plus women, you know, I've had some guy friends that have gone the vegan route and, mm -hmm. you know, they played soccer or they did some really heavy duty sports mm -hmm. and they, they couldn't do it. And then their injuries went through the roof. Yeah. Um, and they really struggled. And like one time I took a friend out for lobster. He's like, I'm vegan. I'm vegan. I'm like, mm -hmm. we're eating lobster, dude. And I'm buying. Mm -hmm. So you should just give that up for today. <laughs> and he did. I broke his veganism. I converted him <laughs> like a Mormon. And, yeah. uh, and after that, he, he, he switched back to me after I broke his veganism and he, um, yeah, he's like, Chris, I was getting it. all these injuries. I couldn't play. I didn't have any energy. He goes, yeah. I, I feel like I'm hundred percent back now. I'm like, you're a freaking caveman. You're a man. You're a gladiator. You gotta, you gotta have this stuff. I think, you know, women are smaller than us. They're, they're kind of more feminine. They're not really designed to have upper arm strength like we are i mean we're designed that way for genetic reasons mm -hmm. and biological reasons maybe is a better word um but yeah it's it's really interesting to me how how much of some of this stuff we you know yeah, well, we're missing. and every once in a while just so you know every once in a while i recommend somebody goes vegan sure like it can be a tool in certain situations but man mm -hmm. to tell everybody they should be going vegan is absolutely insane and there's a lot of politicians that are doing this and again yeah. it's money it's just like the plastics being legalized and parabens and all this stuff mm -hmm. at the end of the day if you dig deep enough you find money is at the root cause yeah. of why they're recommending it and i lo i lost 75 pounds going vegan mm -hmm. and uh going intermittent fasting yeah, fasting um, is, and I've done yeah. it twice now. And uh, but you know, once I kind of bottomed out, I I went back to um, not being vegan. So yeah, it's it does have its place. And yeah, maybe eating more vegetables is is good for you. You know, I still take in my yep. broccoli and cauliflower. But uh, yeah, I was doing the whole soy thing, making oh, yeah. you know barbecue ribs out of soy and crap mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, buying the bricks of whatever. Um, but, uh, anything more you want to touch on about your book and some of the things that you do for people? No, I think that's good. I mean, yeah, it's an infinite amount of information, your genetics, you know, so that we could talk about literally all day long, but I don't want to bore people too much. I mean, buy the book. Yeah. Buy the book. I appreciate, you know, you, you, <laughs> you promoting it and I appreciate people that buy it. Even, even though I published it a while ago, it's still very relevant. It's, it's it's still a problem and you still need to have self-knowledge, right? Like the more you know about yourself, I say knowledge is power, right? Like mm -hmm. if you know something, you can take action. If you don't know yeah. these chemicals are bad, well, of course you're just going to keep using them. The more you know, the better. Yeah. I mean, a few, a couple of my friends on Facebook were like, what are you doing, Chris? You're changing all your, what, what, what kind of, what, what are you, what are you, uh, you're going to be you're gonna be full <laughs> queuing on next or something. Yeah. What's going on there, buddy? Mm -hmm. And uh, you got a new cult you're joining? What's going on? And uh, I'm like, I'm like, look at it this way, man. I mean, I use soaps and shampoos mm -hmm. and underarm deodorant and and uh, detergent and stuff to clean my stuff. Uh, as long as I'm not walking around smelling like uh, I don't know, uh, uh, Bill, what's his face from Caddyshack? Um, you <laughs> know, Sasquatch. <laughs> yes, yeah, Sasquatch. I got the whole Sasquatch thing going. As long as I'm not smelling like that, and chicks are like, ooh, you know, I already got enough of that problem going on with my looks. Um, you know, and uh, maybe I can put some of this in my Tinder profile and I get more babes or something. But <laughs> no, as long as I'm still getting clean and I don't stink, and uh, I actually, I honestly, I actually feel better. I feel like there's less residual. My hair feels softer and cleaner and kind of like more natural because I've always hated those shampoos that like, Oh, we make it so that you feel your hair feels more silky. And that's right. really just like a wax or some crap. They oh, it's, it's usually sunscreen. It's Is funny it? because they'll advertise it. Yeah, they'll say like like a lot of these companies that put pictures of hair molecules and then they'll show like with with the sunscreen or with the with their shampoo or without and it's all like frayed up and stuff. But that's the sunscreen molecules they're putting in there, which again are just as estrogenic as could be. Yeah, I've, I've, there's some that I bought, some shampoos that I bought. I'm like, what the hell is in my hair? It feels <laughs> like I haven't shampooed for like a week and it's all yeah. nasty. Yeah. And I'm getting that from the shampoo. Sure. So uh, this has been a great discussion. Uh, we certainly appreciate you having us on the, uh, having you on the show, having both of us on the show, I guess. We appreciate <laughs> that. 
the hell I'm talking about. Uh, give us the plug so people can find you on the interwebs, reach out to you more, and maybe get involved with your uh, testing that you do and whatever sort of mm -hmm. coaching results you may want. Yeah, like I say, the website's clunky. It came about because I was doing this government contract and I just had to come up with something quick, but it's ajconsultingcompany.com. That's where it's all at. I mean, the DNA consulting, you know, and Astro Generation is the name of the book, the name of this podcast. So pretty straightforward there. There you go. And check out his uh, What I Use list that's on there. You can find it's one of the tabs. Uh, like I said, I went and bought a bunch of stuff that I use on a daily basis. I'm probably going to look at some more, like blankets and stuff like that, pillowcases, uh, the toothbrush, I think, stuff I think I got to order. Um, but, yeah, I mean, what can it hurt? Like, it, it can't hurt you. I mean, in fact, if anything, just having less of these chemicals in your system, um, you know, I mean, it, the, the less of this crap you need for all the stuff they put in our food and everything else, the better off yeah, you can be. Exactly. And I think you mentioned, this is probably a late thing to throw in, but I think milk was a big estrogen thing for you. It can um, be. Oh, yeah. yeah. What about raw milk? I had a question about that. If, yeah, raw milk can be good. It depends on the person and the genetics, right? Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Like I had okay. a client earlier today. He's very dairy sensitive. I had multiple clients. I had a guy from Berlin I talked to earlier this morning, and he, had, he was great with dairy, you know? Mm-hmm. So but am I going to get a lot of estrogen from raw milk, or is that no? Not usually, no. Wow, I, I mean, just tried some the other day because you got yeah. me thinking about this stuff. And there was a food yeah. truck that they have a farm and they make red, uh, raw milk, and I bought mm -hmm. some, and it was really good. But I'm like, I don't want more estrogen from milk. So. No, well, some of these giant factories they they get the cow pregnant and then they continue milking the cow, and so there's a lot mm. of cow because when 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 a cow is pregnant, their estrogen goes sky high. Mm. And then that ends up in the milk and they just mix it in with all the other milk. But that's mass production farming. Mm. That's not like raw milk, small farms. You know, they're not yeah. doing stuff like that as much. I think these guys are a small farm here locally here in Utah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'll thing. check out more of that raw milk stuff. Um, well, it's wonderful to have you on the show. Go order the book, guys. You can take and get it. Let me pull it up because I have a few different underarm deodorants here from a site up. Uh, the book is called Estro Generation. How Estrogenics Are Making You Fat, Sick, and Infertile. Maybe Cry More, too, by Dr. Anthony G.J. <laughs> cry less, people, especially you men these days. So, uh, guys, uh, be sure to check that out. You can go see the video version of this on YouTube.com, for Chess Chris Voss. Hit the bell notification button. Go to Goodreads.com, for Chess Chris Voss. You can see my books and everything we're reading and reviewing over there, as well as, I'm sure, Dr. J's book. You can go to all of our groups, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, all those different places the Chris Voss shows at. And uh, also go see our LinkedIn newsletter and uh, the big group there on LinkedIn. Thanks for tuning in. Be good to each other, and we'll see you guys next time.